I'm a happy man. I'm a happy man. I'm so happy, just as happy as can be. Welcome to The Happiness Show, the show dedicated to putting positive energy out to the universe. On today's show, special guests Lisa Lampanelli, Colin Quinn, and Susie Essman. And here to take you to that happy place is your host, the doctor of happiness, the empresario of fun, the maharaja of merriment, the czar of zany, the ambassador of amusement, Jeffrey Gurian. Hey everybody, it's Jeffrey Gurian and welcome to The Happiness Show. I am so happy that you're here with me today. And I'm going to be bringing you very special guests because this show is actually dedicated to putting positive energy out to the universe. So my guests are going to be people that spend their lives making other people happy. But we're going to talk about what makes them happy and how you can do that and bring happiness into your own lives. Uh, happiness is, is such a, a big concept. Uh, it, it was actually written into our own Declaration of Independence back in 1776. The Declaration of Independence gave us three what they called inalienable rights. That means that they were available to everyone, that everyone should have these. And it's life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And we've been pursuing happiness ever since. So I have three very special guests and dear friends of mine here with me today who are going to talk about that. Uh, the great Lisa Lampanelli, the amazing Colin Quinn, and the unbeatable Susie Essman. And here with me now, please help me welcome Lisa Lampanelli. Hi, Lisa. Hey, how are you? Hey, Jeffrey. Awesome to see you. Yeah, well, I love the idea for this show. This is great. Thank you so much. It's so meaningful to me. It's very important. And having you on is especially important to me because of all the things that you've accomplished and, you know, the the way that you've taken control of your life. Mm -hmm. I'm in awe of that. I always admire people who have the courage to do that. Thank you. And can you say a little bit about like where your changes started that led you? Because all this is about happiness, and that's what you did to bring happiness into your own life. Right. Things have gotten enormously better for me in the past year, but I think I was never really too freaked out about change. So um, I had a successful career as a journalist till I was 30, I knew I should try comedy. I go, just try it once. What's the worst that can happen? That was always my philosophy. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> so I tried it, and thank God it went well, and I just started doing it. And I was like, well, if I could just make $1,500 a week, that's I'll be happy there. Right. And it, I think because I didn't attach too much money to it, everything started blowing up really well with comedy. So that happened. But um, in the past year, what I've really done is work on sort of eliminating things from my life that didn't really work for me anymore. So getting rid of a toxic friend, um, you know, getting out of a marriage that was neither good nor bad, but was somewhere in between. So it wasn't really meant to be. But you did it in a kind oh, way. Oh, of course. I mean, and that, that's, like, that's so why important. I said that's yeah. why I never say it was a bad marriage because mm -hmm. it was just not right. And that's fine because all my relationships haven't been right, but they've led me and the other person to where they they need to go. Um, and also just sort of rethinking my comedy and sort of making it um, just as funny, but more positive, meaning don't talk crap about the guy you're divorcing. Don't talk crap about, you know, this one or that one. You know, yeah, you can be an insult comic with love like I always was, mm -hmm. but I'm talking about more real things. And especially with the Broadway show, Fat Girl Interrupted putting out there the real stuff about my struggles with weight and men and body image and self-esteem. But you made that choice to make yourself happy. Yes. And that's an interesting thing. Happiness doesn't come from outside validation. One of the great sayings that I've heard is happiness is wanting what you already have, mm. which is very meaningful to me. And, and, and happiness comes from within. Yes. It's not how many people tell you that you're great or wonderful and talented and fabulous or how much money you have in the bank or how much acclaim you have. It's what you think of yourself. It's an inside job. Yes, because all that agree? stuff hasn't worked yet on me. And finally, when I shifted it to be me looking in the mirror, being happy internally, that's when it all shifted. I go, I'm making myself happy. I'm going to be that person who just glows from inside instead of look at how many pairs of shoes I have. Look at how many purses I have. Look at how many houses I have. 
yes, is is it nice to have money? Yes, but guess what? The best thing you can do with it is go to a shrink, go to retreats, go to take a uh, religion class, go to figure out what you believe in and work on yourself so you could help other people. So that's where I think the big tool with money comes in. Do you believe that 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 everyone can be happy? Is there a is there a, a if path? they're willing to work on if themselves? Yes, I don't think it comes without working on yourself because I think they're quote unquote. I'm going to quibble with you on semantics. Mm-hmm. I think happiness and joy are different. I think joy is what comes from inside and happiness can be circumstantial. You might equate them with the same thing, but I was reading Brene Brown, Mm -hmm. read Daring Greatly, and it's just a slight tweak. It's like joy is that thing that's in there. I could be happy buying a new house, but it's not going to last more than about nine months and then I'm going to be the same miserable bastard I always was. Joy would let me lose that house in a hurricane and I'd still be okay. So whether it's happiness in there or joy, mm-hmm. there's circumstantial happiness and and non-circumstantial, the good feeling inside. So I think if you work on yourself and you're aware of your faults and you're aware of what you do to other people and try to change it, I think you can always be happy. But if I don't, I don't know how you can be happy if you don't. Do you do anything in your home, the way you live, do you set up anything in particular that makes you happy? What I mean, like I teach Mm -hmm. people to create what I call a happiness center for themselves Mm -hmm. and to surround yourself with things that you see Mm -hmm. that make you happy. Colors, pictures Mm -hmm. of people, Mm -hmm. things like that. Do you do that for yourself? Yeah, tell me. My house, my my apartment in the city is the brightest colors you've ever seen of yellow and orange and red. And it's just an apple green. So Mm -hmm. it's like, wow. Like I always said, you cannot be in a bad mood in my apartment. Like there's no way. And every single thing that my nieces and nephews have given me and every book that I like is on these enormous shelves. It's just, and I look at these little things the kids gave me and I just get happy. Mm -hmm. Um, My house in Connecticut, it's right on a private beach. So I literally wake up and I just see water. And I think water is like a really spiritual thing. And I hear it when I open the doors and I'm like, oh my God. So I literally have one corner of my couch is so dented because it's the only place I sit in this huge house and look at the water. Like, I don't even have to go outside. I could just look at that water in the winter and there's something happy about it. And my dog, Parker, is, they are happiness. My dog, oh my God, during my father's illness, like I'd be always screaming at some nurse's aide or I'd be yelling about something and then crying after. My poor dog, he's so sensitive. He's like you. You're the Parker (laughs) of people. He would hear me screaming and tiptoe out of the room like stealthy, like I don't want her to yell at me. And the second, and I mean the second it went from yelling to and start crying, run up right on my lap and be like, "Mm." today I was crying on the phone to my spiritual director. He comes right up like there's something wrong and he just sits there. So I think that a pet often makes you really happy. Even plants can. Since my dad died, I took three of his easels because he was a painter and I have an easel with paintings of his on every floor. And I look at it and I go, oh, dad, that you is know, it's awesome. really nice. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, and it's so important. My whole place is white. My piano is white. Mm. My carpeting is white. My car- brightness, bright colors. Mm-hmm. You know, dog, everybody says it is mm-hmm. G-O-D spelled backwards. Yes, yes. Oh, my know? doggy is the best. And water is the element of the second chakra, which is the mm-hmm. chakra of creativity and sensitivity. No wonder and, I love it there. And all of your colors that you mentioned, they're all the chakra colors, yeah. orange and yellow. Green is the heart chakra. Oh, so no wonder all my bedrooms are green. You're living the life that leads to happiness. Yeah. And that's, and that's it. And I can see you're glowing. I You're really am so psyched because I go, yeah. I'm on to something. Like, I just you know are, it. Yeah. Like, I felt so lost. And Jimmy was such a gentleman yesterday. We, we talked and he's like, I think I had to get out of the way for you to be really happy and peaceful. Mm-hmm. And I go, that's really astute, you know, because I don't think you can have things in your way that aren't making you truly happy. I was put to shame by... I remember reading Beth Stern's book about dog care, Mm -hmm. and I just looked in the back to see what she said about herself in her bio, and it said, Beth is, you know, works for North Carolina Animal League. She lives blissfully in New York with her husband, Howard, and they mentioned the pets, and I just started bawling because I go, I'm not living blissfully. And I started crying, and I go, I got to get out of this marriage because I'm not doing him a damn favor because this guy deserves better. I deserve better. And... If friends is all you're meant to be, that's it. 
but it's Beth Stern. I credit her. That's amazing. It's a very high level thought. And the fact that both of you are on that same level Mm -hmm. says a lot about you two. And that's why you met. Because as you know, when you lead a spiritual life, every you have to understand every single thing that happened, whether you label it good or bad, mm-hmm. had to happen exactly that way to get you where you are at this moment. Sitting here with me talking about this, right? everything in your life was leading up to this moment. And that's all we have is the now. Well, if I would known it would lead here, I certainly would have done things differently. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'm but, taking what I can. You know, maybe I'm, I'll meet somebody cute on the way out. You, you never know. That's, know. The, that's <laughs> it. In the elevator on the way downstairs. There you go. There you go. I can't tell you. I am so happy to have you here today. Oh. It meant so Aww, much to you. me for you to come on and be part of the happiness show. It was amazing. Well, you've me. always inspired me. You have. You know, you, you get it. I don't, don't know a lot of straight guys who get it. So thank you for getting it. This is The Happiness Show, and I am Jeffrey Gurian, and probably will be again at some point in the future. That was my dear friend, Lisa Lampanelli. And coming up, another dear friend, a friend for many years, uh, who's taking the time to call in in the midst of his tour for his one-man show, Unconstitutional, calling in from Philadelphia, my old friend, Colin Quinn. Colin, are you there? Yes, I am, Jeffrey. Hello. Hey, how are you, man? Fine. What would you say were some of the happiest times in your life? Um, I would say, uh, you know, uh, like anybody else, different relationships, moments in different relationships. Not the whole relationship, of course, but yeah, right, yeah. magic those magic times in your early parts of your relationship, like everybody else, you know, mm-hmm. where you just like, wow, you feel high, you feel in love. And then, they, you know, it's a drug. People go, that's a drug. And it doesn't last forever. It's like, I know, but it's fun. It makes you happy. <laughs> and like, but it's not real. You're like, I didn't say it was real at the time. It feels good enough, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, um, it feels real. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So what if it's not, if it's not mature and realistic, it's still fun at the time. And it makes you happy. And then, um, you know, different things stand up. Like I said, different p- parts. When I did this play about my family, Irish Wake, and they all came to see it. Mm-hmm. Like, that was a real, you know, like everybody in my family came to see this play. It was about us and about growing up, and they all loved it, and it was getting laughs, and everybody was so happy about that. And I remember I that. George I remember Carlin, that. Play. Yeah, go ahead. I had George Carlin on Tough Crowd, and the whole audience was all my cousins and my uncles and my aunts, my father, my mother. Everybody came because they're all George Carlin is their guy, you know. Mm-hmm. And they all, you know, he's like the Irish New York guy, ex fallen cat. He really, and they all came to the show, and that was like a big thing to me, you know, because they all looked. Everybody's just like together, and it was oh, it was brutal. Great Irish people don't believe in being too happy. <laughs> we, we look down on that, you know. We, well, Jewish people, people too. Are, we're afraid. We're afraid to acknowledge happiness, right? Right. Irish people. It's not that we're afraid. We literally look down on it. <laughs> we're disgusted. We're disgusted by uh, over overt displays of either affection or emotion. We just think it, it nauseates us. I don't know why, but it's an Irish thing, you know. And um, but uh, yeah, remote control. I was happy once I was there, but when I first got on there, I was a little. I was just, I'm a disgruntled employee. That's the only way to describe me, really. When I got the news about SNL, I was happy because that was already a thing. I knew what it was, you know. You remember it clearly. How you felt that day? I got day? hired as a writer. I got hired as a writer. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I get to go to New York and make my living writing for SNL. This is crazy. Now, where were you about, at the time? I was in L.A. Oh, you were out in, in LA. L.A.? Oh, okay. Stuck in L.A. I'd written on Living Color. Uh-huh. And then you suddenly got the news that you're going to New York, so you felt a sense I, of... I was blown away. I couldn't believe it. Amazing, right? But um... So you, you amuse yourself in different ways. Yeah, I mean, it's not really like, uh, you know, I mean, happiness is too, you know, immediacy of happiness comes out of a spontaneous moment. Like, I, if you could force, if there were ways, I mean, I'll tell you what makes me happy. Read Confederacy of Dunces. I read the book Confederacy of Dunces. Yeah. And any time I open it and start reading it, I start laughing, and I love it so much. Cool. That's what I do. You, I don't know how you feel about it, but to me, you are a radi- you, you radiate happiness when I see you. Wow. And you bring that to people that you perform for. And so I'm, I'm really thrilled that you called in today to be on with me. This is a, a very special show for me because this show is to counteract all the negativity in the world. We're surrounded by mean-spiritedness, by people who just want to bring us down. And I want to put out a show that uh, may be inspirational to people and just try to help people nice. through their day, man. And so I really Great. thank you so much for being part of it. 
Great. All right, Jeffrey. Pleasure, man, always. Thanks, Kyle. And we'll continue this at another time. Good to see you. Good luck with your show. And uh, unconstitutional, everybody. Go see it. It's an amazing, amazing show, as all of Colin's stuff is. And I look forward to seeing you soon, buddy. Same here. Thanks, Kyle. Right, okay, have a great Bye. day. Bye-bye. This is The Happiness Show, and I'm your host, Jeffrey Gurian. And that was my good friend, Colin Quinn, calling in from Philly. And my third guest today is another dear friend, someone you know and love from HBO's Curb Your Enthusiasm, the inimitable Susie Essman. I'm welcoming Susie Essman to the Thank show. Thank you, How are Jeffrey. You? I'm happy to be here. Yes, and I'm happy you know, to have I'm you here. You know, I'm listening to you. I was just thinking, it's a choice. Happiness is a choice. Mm -hmm. I tell my girls this all the time. You can choose to be negative. You could choose to be positive. It's a conscious choice. Now, some people uh, have a, a greater affinity for positive than negative, you know. Uh, yes. Like my mother, I always say, you know, they say the glass is half full, the glass is it's half, half empty. empty. Right? My mother, there's no glass. Yeah. <laughs> okay? That's how negative it is. <laughs> there's no, no glass. glass at all. But, and if there was, it would be broken. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know. But um, having grown up with that, which was very difficult, I made a conscious choice not yes. to be that. Exactly, exactly. Caroline really liked me. And at that time, I think I was only doing characters. And she asked me to open for Gilbert. Wow. Gilbert Gottfried. Okay. Uh -huh. And it was June. So it was probably June 1984. Mm -hmm. And I was at the time, they used to have posters all over the city, Caroline's. Remember, they would have posters all over the city. So I was downtown in the village. It was definitely 1984. Mm -hmm. And I see this poster of Gilbert. And it said something like special guest star Susie Essman. And that was a moment where it was like, whoa, I really am a comedian. Yeah. My name's on the poster. Mm. I really am a comedian. I remember the thrill I got from that of of this this thing that, you know, because I had struggled so much of what I was going to do with my life and a lot of unhappiness in my 20s, a mm -hmm. lot of unhappiness mm. and a, and uh, I, clinical depression, a deep, deep depression and suicidal and all this. And then I found stand up and it was the thing that saved my life. That and then I started doing this. And then when I saw my name on that poster with that Gilbert face up there, you know. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> I can picture that face. Yeah. I got pictures from, from those and days. It yeah. was just like it was a moment where I felt as though, OK, I came out of the darkness, which had been extremely dark. Mm -hmm. And I am moving in the right direction towards the light. It was mm -hmm. just one of those moments that I remember. It was a Sheridan Square in the village. And it's so interesting because it's 30 years ago, 84. Yeah. Right. And you remember it like it was yesterday. I, I do. Can see it. You know, I'm looking right at you again. I'm watching yeah. you. And I, I love seeing that when people talk about things that were happy to them, they glow. There's a glow when you remember that, you know. Go with the way your blood beats. Meaning, you know. Uh, Not your heart beats, your blood your beats. Your blood beats. Go with the way your blood beats. What you feel inside your blood beating. Be who you are. You can't be someone else. Mm -hmm. You know, you cannot. That's no. If you try to be someone else or something that you're not, you're not living a life. Right. And if you if you. And again, you know, it's so hard because people there's so much narcissism in the world. And I'm not talking about that. Just thinking it's like my, my 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 one daughter. I'm constantly saying, get out of your own asshole. <laughs> you know, yeah. she's so far she's up far her up ass there, yeah. that she's just thinking about herself and what this one thinks about me. And that one is just like nobody's thinking about you. Everybody's thinking about themselves. Mm -hmm. Nobody that's really cares. True. Yeah, that's true. Right? <laughs> so it's just like. Find find your your inner voice. Find who you are. Find what's making your blood beat and who you are. And be that as opposed to searching outside of yourself for to be like this person or that person or mm -hmm. Beyonce or Kim Kardashian or mm -hmm. whoever it is. You know, find who you are. Get to know yourself. I spent many years in psychoanalysis. Mm -hmm. And the whole purpose of it was really, in retrospect, was to... Make my unconscious conscious to understand all those things, who I am, uniquely who I am, not who anybody thinks I am. Mm -hmm. and, and and caring. One of the great things about getting old is that you don't care what anybody thinks anymore. You know, there's a freedom. That, yeah, that yeah, it's yeah. like people yeah. are going to think whatever they need to think is what mm -hmm. I've learned in my old age. And you just you just don't give a shit what anybody thinks of you anymore. You know, I mean, you not in the sense you do of, when it, you don't. Not I know. in the sense it's not of like insensitive. Yeah, I'm yeah. not talking about that. You're not sensitive to other people's, but you're not self conscious. 
in that same way. And oh my God, that feels so much better. Well, I'm going to wrap up by saying, you know, this whole thing was about happiness and uh Personally, you make me happy. Oh, thank you, and, Jeffrey. You make me you. happy. Well, thank you so much for coming on. It was. And really you know, wonderful. can I say yeah. something else yeah. Yeah. about you? You're a very kind person. You've always been a very kind person, and I think that that's something that's really important. Also, in happiness, is kindness. I I think you can't separate the two, and I think that kindness gets short shrifted. Well, thank you. I, my answer to that is, it takes one to know one. <laughs> so, thank you, Susie. It's always so wonderful to see you. I'm a happy man. I am so happy, happy doing man. this show. And I hope you feel happy too. That was just a taste of what you can expect to experience here on The Happiness Show, the show that's truly dedicated to putting positive energy out to the universe. I want to thank my special guests and dear friends, Lisa Lampanelli, Colin Quinn, and Susie Essman. Keep smiling until we're all together again next time. And hopefully, that'll be very soon. I'm Jeffrey Gurian, your host. And because we spent this special time together, I can honestly say, I'm a happy man. Down the love lane. And I, I, I love you, baby. Yeah. I love you so. Whoa, 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 my baby. Hey guys, thanks for watching Comedy Matters TV. To check out some of our other videos, click on the boxes on either side of me. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Not just for me, but for my parents.